All right. Uh, this was like around 2009. Started doing com I've been doing comedy for a while. And I uh, had a little bit of success, but I was definitely very financially unstable. And I had this idea, I'm going to start taking acting classes uh, just so that maybe I can get some acting work. And, <laughs> and then uh, I learned that I'm not a good actor. <laughs> That this is serious work, and it didn't come naturally to me. Um, I, I felt like I, 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 I wasn't in touch enough with my body and my emotions to uh, express them on command in a very contrived environment. And also, I have this tendency to shut down and clam up when I find myself surrounded by people who uh, are, are loud and self-centered and fake. <laughs> so I had a hard time in acting class. Um, yeah, I struggled, and I, I remember one specific day I went. I was I, I went to a, a fellow student's house for a rehearsal. We were you know rehearsing before the next class, and this was the cute girl. This is the you know there's always the cute girl. This is the cute girl in the class, and I was excited. Because even though I had been single for several years and was totally socially awkward and insecure, I thought in my head, like, maybe the combination of my bad acting and my lack of confidence is going to be super charming. <laughs> so we, uh, we worked on this scene, and there was, a there was a moment of sexual tension in the scene. And I was stoked on it. And, and, then, and, then, and then I was like, okay, there's tension. But it ain't sexual. <laughs> Not the sexy variety. I, uh, yeah, the more we rehearsed, the more frustrated she got. And at one point she just yelled out, she said, don't you know how to act flirty? I don't know. I, I, didn't, I didn't know how to respond to that. I was like, that's not a very good acting note. <laughs> it's not a specific adjustment for me to make. <laughs> you know? And uh, I don't know. I was like, well, what do you, what, I'm supposed to do some winking? <laughs> like flex a little bit, you know? I didn't know, I didn't know how to act flirty. And it just, it just put me more in my head. And you know, that's not good for acting or wooing. So I, I left, and that night I drove home, and I was sad, and I was defeated, and then I thought to myself, man, screw her. She's probably a horrible person in real life. I mean, there's got to be a reason why we're both doing homework on Valentine's Day. I didn't really give a shit about Valentine's Day, but I was like, that's telling of her and why she's not dating anybody. <laughs> But I, it wasn't all bad. My teacher had one good thing to say, my acting teacher. The one positive comment she had for me was, you have a great sense of stillness. <laughs> I was like, awesome. I could play a corpse. They, they made a movie about Battleship. Maybe they'll have one about Freeze Tag. <laughs> So I decided to just like chill out with the acting. I'm gonna put that on hold until I have like more time to dedicate more seriously to this craft or until at least I gain more life experience that I can draw from to be more flirty. <laughs> Later that year I moved here, I moved to New York City and uh, the price shock prompted me to start looking for additional income. I applied for a temp job with the 2010 Census Bureau uh, and you know, temp jobs are what comedians, actors, whatever, we, it's what we do to get by between gigs. And little did I know though, like this job with the federal government was about to be the greatest acting challenge of my career. <laughs> because they hired me over the phone. They, they said, you, they, they gave me my title, my official title was office clerk. And when I, when I got there, it felt like I walked straight into like a, like a Kafka novel or a Samuel Beckett play or like a Republican's nightmare. Because after I signed this four-week contract, 
it became clear that no one really knew why I was hired, what I was supposed to be doing, or who was supposed to be in charge of me. I got shuffled around, and I ended up under the guidance of this guy named Bob. And Bob was an out-of-work <laughs> computer engineer who uh, was now in charge of office supplies. And by observing the way Bob worked, I knew that he didn't give a shit and that this was one of those gigs where you just had to look realistically busy whenever the head of operations walked by. <laughs> and her name was Julia. And Julia was our audience, right? But she was a tough critic. She fired two other office clerks that were brought on the same day I was hired. And, you know, we've all had jobs like that in the private or in the public sector. You've had jobs where you just had to, you know, busy it up whenever somebody walked by. Like you just hide the web browser, pull up a spreadsheet, stare, scroll, pick up the phone, drop some corporate lingo, like synergy, leverage, yeah, profits. And, and I, I, I did some work, you know, like I, 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 sorted documents for the payroll department. I, I helped Bob do some inventory. Like I had a few legitimate assignments that I would spread over the course of my contract. What looked like about two, three days of work lasted me a whole month. <laughs> it was like a Hanukkah miracle. <laughs> but the epitome, the, 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 the height of this, the one project that really captured like this whole experience was some was an assignment I got from Bob, and it was something he called the pile. And the pile, oh snap! I forgot there was another part to the story. The problem was, I didn't have all the things that all the props to look busy. You know, I I they didn't give me a desk or a table or a phone, they put me in a room with boxes. So every time Julia walked by, I would touch a box. <laughs> right? If the box was open, I would look inside the box. If it was closed, I would just stare at it as if I was examining the structural integrity. <laughs> for safety. So the pile was Bob's assignment and the, it was, a, the, a huge pile of boxes in the room I was stationed in. And it was from one wall to the other. And what I did was I would grab a box off the pile. I would bring it down. I would cut it open. I would count one, two, three, four items in the box that had been clearly marked on the side. I would tape it back up. I would check that I had counted the box. And I would grab another one and repeat. And I did that hundreds of times. And after days of doing the same thing, Nothing changed. I added no value whatsoever. And I wish that there had been a camera in the room to record this scene, because if you had been able to watch this video fast forward like a time lapse, you would have been able to witness uh, a wave traveling through the pile from the front to the back as I essentially shifted this whole mammoth mountain of boxes forward one length of a box. <laughs> it was my first performance art piece. <laughs> it was avant-garde theater at its best, or worst. I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't think anyone knows the difference. <laughs> but I do know that that better have been my last temp job. And if I ever have to do that much acting again, the paycheck better be from Hollywood and not the government. <laughs> and if I ever see that cute girl from acting class again, I'm confident that I could impress her with a couple of new moves that I have learned from boxes. <laughs> Thank y'all very much.